What's going on, guys? So that is a monochromatic nightmare. This is a really cool red Gundam. And this is Master Grade Monday. Another one in double October. Let's get rolling. All right, guys, welcome back to Master Grade Monday and the reddest thing you've probably ever seen in your life. Oh, good Lord. Um, so this was one of the quote-unquote surprises of uh, Double October this year. So because I missed out on my XC Repair 3 that never got delivered, I decided that I'd give P-Bandai another chance to get me something I wanted, and I went for this. The Gundam Australia Type F Full Weapons Set. And I got this from P Bandai Direct, though you could pick it up from other people if you wanted to. Oh, good lord. And I recall when we did the Australia Type F HG review a couple years ago that it was a nightmare of a review. And uh, this one, pretty much going to be the same. Because there's just so much crap. Alright, so we have a whole lot of box art going on here we got explosions over here we got bigger explosions there we got beam weapons coming out the wazoo and we have pistols flipping forward and it actually does look like the actual kit so it's possible that they actually did the thing I have no idea if i'm honest with you but being that this is a p bandai box there's not a ton going on well maybe there is so you come down here and you've got the gny 001f so, you know, it's the uh, predecessor to the XCF, more or less. And it's a full weapon set. By the way, there's a ton of runners still in here. Ah, come on, if you, wow, okay. So, if you turn it this way, you get all of the letters in the world that you could possibly ever want. And it is from Mobile Suit Gundam F and Mobile Suit Gundam 00i. Sorry, I left, left off the 00 part. My bad. Got BandaiHobby.net there. Technically a red logo because, well, they're just going monochromatic. It's not legitimately like the not Bandai Spirits logo. Yep. <laughs> Seriously, heavy box. And since there's nothing else going on here, you got Gundam Australia Type F, full weapon set, Celestial Being for shit. Uh, mobile shit. So that's that offshoot, basically, from that side story. So I gotta watch where I'm going here. You got, all right, PSP, ABS, PVC, EVAC. You got Polly Bag with the little guy with the toilet. You got all your warnings up here. Read the instruction manuals. You're not the boss of me. Box. And uh, no price here. No glue required. That's pretty much true, though I did use a tiny bit of glue in one spot just because. Um, and yeah, I don't. Does it have an artist name on there somewhere? I don't think so. It doesn't appear to be so. But I'm going to very slowly tip this up so that I don't end up with a huge mess. Bah. All right, and by the way, that was Bandai uh, 2022. Oh, good lord. Yeah, seriously, no box art. Um, strange. I don't know. Weird. I didn't see. I didn't see an artist name. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Big red Gundam upside down box. Good lord. <sighs> Sorry, I just know there's so much to this thing. Let's just let's just go. Let's, let's just get to it. Come on, let's just. It's, it's taking a couple days. Let's just let's just get to this. That's a pep talk just for me, not you guys. <sighs> All right, guys. So here we have Char's favorite Gundam from the Double O series. No, but seriously, like this is essentially Char's. <laughs> Char's Gundam. Uh, it is absurdly red. Um, and this is the Type F question mark. I believe I went with the Type F, not the Type F2. Um, so one thing about it is, um, let, me, let me brighten this up just so here. There we go. Uh, it does give you plenty of options for customization. Uh, we'll go over them as we go, but for the most part, I want to show the Gundam as it currently is. So right now, it has it set up where you have these um, weapon mount systems here right here over here and oh yeah, right there and of course in this version you use these front skirts which look pretty cool in my opinion 
I like them. Uh, the legs and arms and most of the chest are all straight up Exia parts. But then, of course, you do get the change of things like the shoulder pads up here. The head, which I'm going to zoom, zoom, there we go, zoom in on. And, oh good, you can see the eyes through there. I didn't know if you could. So this is the version, maybe the moment to type F, not the type F2. I have to look. I have to look in the thing. I can't remember. So uh, you do get a nice little bit there with a sticker inside. You do get the sticker for the eyes. You do have a faceplate that's back there, but this has the visor section in the small V-fin. It does have a bigger one, you know, that you can add on here. And I don't know if... Because it uses the same A-Runner as Exia, I don't think that this is different to Exia. could be wrong. I'm not sure. But I love that these parts have translucent green bits in there. That looks really good. I remember on the HG I had to add those. You know, that was a bit of a pain. It does have a different uh, door here, as it is. You don't put a pilot in, in the cockpit. At least I didn't. Uh, but I think it probably just another uh, sets enough, I had to guess. Oh, I thought I missed the nub. That's actually a molded piece. Uh, another piece uh, that's very different is the GN Drive setup back here. Super different. I think it's meant to be a condenser pack, not an actual, or at least a uh, storage tank, not a full-on GN Drive, because it doesn't have the cone and anything. But it is also an earlier generation Gundam. And you can open it up like so, and very carefully try to yoink it out the back like so. And you do get the entire wheelie do it should be a solar furnace in there and it will light up same as xcs so if you have uh the leds for that they work exactly the same and uh, in theory it should light up through there unfortunately i don't have any functional leds at the moment uh they got very corroded over the years i do love this edition here where you get these new uh, translucent bits here the cool little energy bits now they loses them from the shoulders adds them there because they need to be there for weapon access. You do keep them on the legs and technically, are they on the forearm? Yeah, they're on the forearm somewhere. Oh, the back, back of the forearm. Yeah, back there. See, look at the rainbow. Just taste the rainbow. And then you do get all new parts on the butt skirt back here, which is just a little add on. And then it changes the direction of the beam savers which is kind of cool in my opinion. I'm going to put this back on before I drop it. I really do like this design though. Like this is just a very, very cool, and in my opinion, far more menacing version of Exia. You, you could tell that it was pretty much the predecessor because it's like 80% the same parts. Um, I'm not going to go over articulation and stuff because that's not what's important here. What is important here is the sheer amount of crap you can put on it. Um, I will go ahead and give it its base loadout, and then I will go from there to do comparisons and stuff, and then we will go with the full uh, weapon set. Is it full weapons? I feel like it's full weapons. It's always an FWP. Thing. Yeah, full weapons. Alright, so it does have a shield of its own, which is different to the Exia shield. You do get a full version of the Exia shield and the GN sword, uh, if you are keen on using that. I'm not going to be using it with this version of this guy, but you do get the same kind of shield mount here. These things do slide in and out. It's just up to you on whether or not you want to. By the way, it does come with a full set of water slides. If you want to deck it out, I did not, at least for the time being, for time's sake. Um, but we'll see in the future. If I do if I do the water slide update, I will show everybody. All right, so you can totally put this on here, though at least with the weapon mount, it's a little blocked up. So that's up to you if you want to use it in this form. Like I said, it does have a couple of different modes here. And then you have its GN Proto Sword which is pretty cool. So this existed before the GN sword, obviously. It does flip out like so. It has a built-in handle right there on a very, very floppy hinge. Though, uh, unlike the Exia, this one does plug in very differently to the forearm. So you want to yoink this part off. And basically you can just set this up. And let's go ahead and put the handle in his hand just for safety's sake. Come on. I'm not going to plug it into the the thing. 
just for the heck of it. And then you got this piece, which will plug in to there. This slides through. This comes in and connect it up like so. Now that is straight up connected form and it does clear this little weapon mount there if you're keen on it. And once again, if you want to, you can position this to tab into the forearm or into, the, I keep saying forearm, into the, the palm of the hand. And it can just be cool like this. And it's neat. It's very neat. Uh, the one thing is, like, you lose some articulation in the head, if I'm honest, because of the giant ears and the giant fins there. Like, you're just you're just losing a lot of range of motion. Not that it has a lot because it is that basic uh, ball joint. But since we're here, and since last week we did the normal Exia, let's just bring them in. The cousins, as it were. You know, it's dad, essentially. So, and I love the fact, now mind you, there is the regular version. I don't think we ever got, I don't have an MG of the normal Astrea. We only have the Type F, the red redo one. The white and blue one is very close very close to what the XCO looks like, but let's just be honest here. We all love the Type F for what it is. It is just big sexy. Um, in theory, it should be just as tall, but for some reason it does look a hair shorter. Don't know why. Could just be the pose. Could just be anything. I mean, the feet, legs, hips, torso, all that's the same. Shoulders are obviously significantly different, but you know, there's your thing. You know, you can see the difference here in the way the shields look, you know, significantly different this is similar to the uh to the shield we eventually saw on uh natalie so and then of course here's the proto sword wish they'd given you a chrome blade with that because it just would look good i can always take it apart paint it nice silver if i wanted to and of course there's the gn sword as as you do so let's get this guy out of here and fold this oh shit <laughs> By the way, you can't move that if it's plugged into the palm. You will screw up. So don't do that if you can have it. I missed a nub on that knuckle. Oh, well. He does come with beam savers, too. And does have the beam blades for that if you're keen on it. And, of course, you will have extras. If you don't want them, you don't need them. Now, I'm going to show off one quick modification for the head. Because you can go... Let's see if I can get this off carefully. Probably not the ball joint but i feel like it's going to be a pain in my butt <sighs> got it okay like it's just a simple ball joint into a poly cap that is on there all right stay all right so let's let's come down here real quick all right so with the face as it is you can let me see here. Can I zoom in? Make my life easy. All right. So you can go ahead and pull off these guys, these little cheek parts, like that. And then you can slide off the entire face, which I don't think is what I was trying to do, but it all came off all at once. And maybe that is what I wanted. Okay, yeah, that is what I wanted. So that includes the visor and this chin piece. So if you don't want those, you can set them aside. And I have a, a bowl of parts here. Got to try to get them all out here. So there's that. Where's my chin? I just wonder there was a chin piece. Don't tell me I lost the chin piece. Ah, uh, dang it. Okay, so the hard part is I have to get that out of there. And it is stuck. Okay, I guess I got it that time. All right, so make sure I don't lose anything. Set that over there. Oof. So this is the problem is that if you want to customize it, you have to go through some great lengths here. So make sure you save that piece. So you end up like this. Grab your other non-masked face like so. Let's put these little guys back on here. Which, these were a pain in the first place. Like, careful putting them back on, though. Come on. 
it, it's kind of hard to manipulate these like small smallish pieces especially after hours of building your fingers are tired okay by the way it doesn't have a rear camera I find that interesting okay so plug that back on that top crest even though it's the same as Xia, it doesn't really want to sit as well as Xia's does okay so here is the normal normal version with no mask it looks pretty cool in my opinion until you knock the v-fan off again all right so just be careful with that got a little stubby stubby v-fan okay so what we're gonna do now we're gonna go ahead and strip it of all these bits a little bit easier when there's nothing attached come on actually that comes off kind of nicely just kind of wiggle it a little come on there we go and you like that out of the form and we'll set that sword aside because we're not going to need it anymore. Pull the shield off. Not going to need that anymore. Go ahead and stick the head back on for the time being. Well, I guess realistically we're not going to pull that off. All right. Okay, so from here, we got to do some stuff. Let's pull off or pull out the sword mounting parts on the hip. Yoink that out. Flip that up. Same thing on the other side. So we have both going on here. Come on. And we have a couple of new parts for this. So these are interesting. And basically, I'm just going to slide them down and on. Like so. And hope you don't pop the whole thing off. Because that would be embarrassing. Alright. And then pull that arm up. Put this here. And slide it down until it snaps on. So now you've got a couple, a couple mounting points. Another thing you can do. Let's find the right part here. Get a little little plug guy like this which will plug in on you can get one for either arm realistically it does have two i've only got uh i've only got one in the thing here and what you can use that for is a little missile pod so this is exactly the same with the exception of color to the one you give it the mg curios now you can do the handle mounted version or you can pop that off and do forearm mounted which is always fun everybody looks a good forearm mounted weapon and then we will move on to and by the way i don't know the names of all these weapons uh you got a nice little rifle here looks pretty good and one thing that's cool is it is molded in two different color plastics so you actually get a darker color that's on the inside and it shows through i think that's really neat you do get this bit that's on a swivel you also get a plug there. So if you could also use that same plug here if you wanted to. Or if you can. Cool. Rifle storage like that on the hip the hip skirts. But for now, we're actually just going to put it in his hand. And you got that, which will plug into the forearm. The handle, obviously going to plug into the palm. Not, not super securely because, well, we know how that works. And close our hand up. So he's holding a rifle. All right, make progress. Move that bolt out of the way. Also got handle here. Do I have that missile pod facing the right way? I think so. Hard to tell. Uh, considering which way the handle came off. Yes, that makes sense. All right, uh, what's up next? Okay, let's show this off because I'm not going to do a whole lot else with it. Uh, we do get its own version of a like GN Gundam hammer, as they call it. Looks pretty cool. You got the translucent spikies coming out of it. 
you actually get a really cool looking handle for it, which is interesting. So I guess you could beat some with it this way. But the other thing is you can yoink that off. And they do give you a fair length of wire, like kind of, if I'm honest, an absurd length of wire for this. And then you can plug that in. And now you've got a kind of remote Gundam Hammer, Hemner, as it were. And you can hold that for sure uh, if you're if you're keen on that. By the way, notice the two different colors of gray plastic there. So let's pull the wire back out. The wire will come out. There we go. And this is a hefty gauge wire comparatively to uh, like ones we get with HG. And you can just plug this back in there if you want. And you can, of course, plug this in here on the hip. Although, due to clearances, you just have to kind of adjust it for things like so. But now he's got those weapons going on. Next up, we have more repeat weapons from other kits. So this is the same little hidden pistol pods as the Dynamis. I think even the color separation is the same. And you do get a left and right pistol. And the main reason you know which one's which is because of where the slot is for the handle now this one is the left-handed had to think about it for a second and by the way when i put them together i fully admit this i put them together wrong so i had one with a solid handle and one with a complete see-through handle so and he will hold those of course so if you're keen on it but you take those and they will plug in here on the legs like that and by the way you do get these plugs as well that will go there if you're keen on doing that and you can mount anything that has these circular mounting points whether it's this this or even the uh, missile pod you can mount that on the leg as well no real need to demonstrate it when i can just tell you so we're getting towards the full-on armored up version here Okay, so next up is what I believe is a bazooka of some sort. Like I said, I didn't look up the names. The uh, instruction sheet too far away at this point. And this one looks like a ship out of Star Wars. Looks like one of the rebel ships from Star Wars. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. They all, they all have a cool reticle sticker and a translucent piece. All the weapons. So that one... This one, I think even the pistols, technically, obviously that. And then the final weapon we'll be looking at here in a minute. And it does actually have a magazine full of what seems to be solid rounds, which is interesting. Not GN missiles. And you can plug that back up in there. Just be wary it doesn't stick too well. It does extend, like most bazookas do. And then you have the what I would consider an incredible daunting task of getting this to go in the hand. So you can, of course, try your damnedest to get this to plug in. I mean, the first time I tried it, it legit took a long time. I will probably edit out the struggle, depending on how hard this actually is. And get that over the shoulder. Thread it through the fingers. Make sure the fingers aren't hitting anywhere unimportant. And then attempt to tab to the palm. Somehow. Some way. Let's, okay, so that's the right angle. All right, so it's tabbed in. And now what we need to do is angle the wrist without losing the gun. And get a little bit of elbow tilt. Holy crap. Okay, so that's the, that's the first time I've got him to hold this gun effectively. Not lying, that is true. Um, and he does have flip out side handles. So if you wanted to one, if you wanted to two hand this, you totally can. Just got flip out handles on either side if you're keen on doing it that way. Stay. Now we have the problem that he's getting very front heavy due to all the weapons. And he's about to get front heavier, as it were, because now we have the big old GN 
bazooka or hyper cannon, mega cannon, whatever. It's like the predecessor to Virtue's cannon, let's be honest here. Okay, so I have a problem right here, and it's that this little translucent bit did not go where it's supposed to. So that's hanging out, and it's not supposed to be. So something came unplugged from where it's meant to go. Um, I'm going to try to fix that right quick. Okay, so it was a minor fix. The dumb thing is, you don't even see it, but it's it's tucked back in there, and I think it did, it just fell out again. So it it sits inside here and then tracks into just that little part of this, well, for lack of a better term, handle. It's not actually a handle, it's a connection point. This is your actual handle. So if you want to hold this thing, you totally can. The other thing is, once again, got the cool reticle slash reflective bit and translucent part. And I love this part. It actually has an expanding barrel. Sorry. An expanding barrel. Look at that on the slide. Love that. Love that. All right. So what we want to do is take this, spin it around. And once again, there's our piece sticking out from whence it came. That was fucking pointless. I'm annoyed by this handle, realistically. So what we have to do, we have to prep the body on this one because it is a bigger weapon. It needs a little bit more connection directly to the GN drive. So we want to pull that off. I'm going to take this piece right there, which now I realize does push out like so. And slide this in as far as it will go. I think that's good. And then, if you're keen on it, utilize the handle to that. Otherwise, you just, well, leave it hanging because you've already got so many friggin' weapons going on. And you do get a little bit of flexibility with it to rotate it, and you can bend it up and down a little, but that's it. Like that's that's pretty much what you're getting out of it. So this is what I would consider like the ridiculous like hyper burst mode. If there is such a thing for this thing. Oh, I gotta fix this. Knew that would happen eventually. I don't think I can push that in there. Cause this is so tight. Yeah, that's that's so tight it won't stay on. Okay, hold on. Let me pull. Let me pull the mace off. So this is a problem now because he's super friggin' front heavy. Let's straighten that out, by the way. Like so. I'm having to kind of hold it up at the same time. Let's get some knee bend involved. Yeah, you know, prep it. There we go. That's how you do it. Go ahead and pull this off. And straighten this guy out. There is a way to do that. And let's see if I can plug this in. This was always a cool idea, but not necessarily always executed very well. Because now I can't... There we go. So I can't plug that in at the same time. Alright, so let's just leave the... Just leave that off. Jesus Christ, really? You know, fuck it. Don't care today. <laughs> That's the least important thing going on right now. So let's plug this back in. If they wanted it to be better, they would have made it better. All right, so that's it as the heavy weapons version. It's it's kind of absurd. I'm going to stop and get a couple pictures of it. Actually, you can probably suck that in. It'll sit nicer on the shoulder. Yeah, there we go. That's actually good. That's good. It's good. Let's go ahead and pull the guns up and out. Just for the heck of it. Like so. It is interesting to see that it uses weapons that the later generation Gundams also use. And I do have the Dynamis right here. Um, so you can see it's essentially the same same pistols. Oh, he's missing a, a, leg, a leg holster. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so I gotta find that. It's probably in this box somewhere. Ah. 
And Kyrgios doesn't have his missile pod on because the mount for that gave out on me. And this one does come with the old forearm mount for that as well. well like I said, I'm going to stop for a second and get some pictures of this ridiculous setup. And then I'll show the next version of this guy. Okay, so... Okay, so next up, we're just going to go ahead and... Well, pull everything off realistically so let's yoink all of these things pull off the weapon mounts pull off all of that Oop. yoink that off and remove that weapon Come on, guy. Yeah, there. That's kind of a pain to get those out. Let's pull this out. And that already removed itself. Fix all that up. Let's get this one out again. <laughs> Spudger. Pull that out like so. And realistically, I'll tell you now, you probably don't want to be swapping all these things out all the time. You probably just want to pick the one you want. It'll just it'll just be better for life if you do that. And sink that away. Get rid of that. So we don't need any of this giant pile of stuff at all. Alright, so we need to come up here to the front skirts and pull them off like so so we don't want the front skirts at all like that and then i might have to get a knife because you got to remove oh, no i got i got enough thumbnail i should be able to get up under here pull that off like so so now i have a naked front skirt as it were get this handle out of here Trying to get these out. Do I got everything? Nope, missing one. That and that and this. Okay. Like I said, little bowl of parts. So realistically, what we're kind of doing here is just swapping out for what are the Exia front skirts. Now, you don't necessarily have to miss it entirely and throw it at your deer you know, face, but you know, you can, you don't have to. And let's see here, just kind of plug that on. Did I get it all the way? Yes, I did. All right. So these are just clipping on right here like that. And then go ahead. This is the one I took off my bed. I want this one, which is also the same as Exia. So it's interesting that to do this conversion, you basically make it a little bit more like Exia. I also forgot to put this back on. Like so. Next up, we also want to remove the V-fin. And you can pick which face you want, go with the visor or not. And earlier when I was talking about the box, some, when I said I mentioned something I glued, I did glue these little yellow bits on. You can see right here they come through there. I just glued one just in case because they are very, very small. So, just in case. All right. Like I said, you don't have to do it. I just chose to for the stability of the thing. Okay, so went through all that to pull these off. So what you're going to do is basically build yourself a small Exia. Go ahead and put this on, like so. And grab... See, is that the right one? Yep. Grab the lens, pop that in. Same thing on the other side. It got a little dusty while sitting around the last couple of days. Push all this together. Like so. 
Same thing on the forearms, although I seem to be missing a lens for the forearms. Okay, it's still in there. All right, so grab that. Make sure you put the... Oh, wait, hold on. You got to pull off. I forgot. You got to pull off the forearm piece here first. I just can't get it in there. Do that. Then this. And considering I just built Exia, like literally right before this, I built this and Exia back to back, in case you're wondering. And same thing over here. Now, you could leave off the inner lens if you feel like it, but it actually magnifies the cool GN condenser thing on the inside. So it's actually acting like a little bit of a small magnifying glass. It helps. Don't leave it off. Even though you could. Don't. And that just sits there. Take form. Put that back on. And I think that's it to basically get us to the V2. I don't think there's any other major changes. I think the beam savers stay the same. GN drive stays the same. All the other stuff. It just becomes a bit more Exia like in its appearance. Adding that extra green and stuff, I think, makes a difference. And like I said, you could swap out for the visor face if you want, or you can leave it with the actual Gundam face. It just depends on what you personally would like from your Astraea. All right, guys. So, in conclusion, as it goes, the Astraea Type F, very, very cool. And yes, I swapped out for the faceplate to show that final version as well, just so you guys could see it. Um, compared to the Exia, it is just so much cooler. Something about being all red, the new details, especially in the chest, the slightly different shoulder pads. Let's be honest, they're very different shoulder pads. Uh, it's just really cool. And yes, while the Australia was also the predecessor, it did operate roughly at the same time on the uh, kind of underground subsect of Celestial Being as well. That's why I didn't have a GN drive. That's why it's using particle tanks. And then the F2 actually got Exia's condensers from its legs and arms and stuff to be upgraded. And it did have Trans Am at this point as well. Um... But the funny thing is, like, it shows, or at least it give you all the weapons to do the Exia weapons. And by the way, I will say this now, with the exception of the uh, clear, the uh, like par particle bands like that for the shoulders, you could technically build a red Exia out of this. From what I can tell, I could be wrong. You might not have the shoulders. I'd have to go back through the runners. But I think you can essentially build almost a complete red Exia. I mean, honestly, you have the chest vents and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you won't have any yellow for that. Um, I know you get the inner frame of the shoulders. Like I said, I just don't know if you get the actual shoulder pieces. I believe you do because it comes with virtually every runner that the Exia has. It's only different with the holographic stuff. So... But anyway, if you really kind of wanted to build an alternate red version of Exia, go ahead, give it a try. Why not? So, and of course, it does come with all of the ridiculous, ridiculous weapons. So, you know, with the exception of this one having some weirdness going on there, and this handle, just, the handles are always going to be a problem, in my opinion. The way they plug into the palms is always going to be an issue. Um, it was stupid that the HG version was the only way you could get uh, the Dynamis um, pistol things, you know, the holsters and stuff like that. But now, of course, the MG comes with it. I don't know where I just got red stuff all over me. It's got to be coming off one of the boxes. It's like the third time it's happened to me tonight. And, you know, it's just interesting to see, you know, weapons pods that we've gotten from other things. And, of course, if you want to keep it in the other way, you can use these things. You can mix and match. The cool thing is it does give you so many options. You can customize it. If you want to keep him with his little GN pistol for the most part instead of that, you can do it. Uh, unfortunately, you can't have this and, like, the shield because this needs to be able to plug in. Though, apparently, this has a small particle tank to keep firing otherwise, I guess. Uh, I was doing a quick read-up while I was posing things. So, that's going to be it for this one. It's definitely worth it. Um, and I know there was the third-party version, quote-unquote, uh, for, like, the longest time. And then Bandai said, hey, don't do that anymore. And uh, popped out with this guy. So, it does look super cool and intimidating. Just look at that. That is just absurd. I'm going to get another picture. 
So guys, that's going to be it for this Master Grade Monday. Uh, we have Master Grade Mondays all the way through the month, essentially. So make sure you're coming back every Monday and then every, pretty much every other day for the reviews of this Double October. If you want to get Double October gear, you can do so on the link down below. If you want to share your collections and or customs or builds, the link to the Discord is down below. And uh, you can join in in either of the collections or Builder Showcase channels there if you want to play along. And if I have the time... As this is coming out, uh, I will have, I will or will have done builder showcases where I'm showing off your builds and collections as we go. So, but I'll see you guys on the next one where this guy will be making a return. Teasers.